Hi, I'm Jorien Treur and I'm an assistant professor at the Amsterdam UMC Hospital at the Genetic Epidemiology Group of the Department of Psychiatry and I'm currently also a fellow here at EAS. I am Margot van der Weijer. I am also an assistant professor at the Genetic Epidemiology Research Team at the Department of Psychiatry, Amsterdam UMC. And hi, I'm Robin Witten. I'm a lecturer at the School of Psychological Science, University of Bristol, and a research fellow at Levisenberg Hospital in Oslo, Norway. And together, the three of us are doing a group fellowship at EAS from February to May of 2024. In the field of psychiatry and mental health, there are many complex causal questions that we cannot answer by conducting a randomized controlled trial, because that would be either unethical or unpractical. Examples of such questions are, for example, if uh, smoking cigarettes increases depressive symptoms, or if physical activity causally reduces levels of stress, because these variables involved are also associated with many confounders, the risk of bias is very high and it's very challenging to test for causality. So one approach to get closer to causal insights for these types of difficult causal questions is through the process that we call triangulation. And triangulation means the explicit combination of several different methods in a single study. The idea here is that it's a prospective process where you first select a number of studies that complement each other in their biases, strengths and weaknesses, and then you uh, interpret the evidence together. And if, one, uh, if several methods point to a causal uh, evidence, then it's much less likely that that's a spurious finding. So our backgrounds are in the fields of epidemiology and psychology, and often in our triangulation design, we make use of methods that incorporate genetic data to improve our understanding of causal inference of mental illness. Uh, as an example, one design we use makes use of twins who are discordant for our trait of interest. So if we take the example that Eureen presented of does smoking causally increase our risk of depressive symptoms, then we could identify twins in which one twin of the twin pair smokes and the other twin does not, and then we could compare the rates of depressive symptoms across the discordant twins. This is a method that tries to isolate the effects of smoking independent from genetics and other shared environmental confounders because the twins share the same genes, uh, if they're identical twins, and uh, they also share the same familial environments. We also make use of naturally occurring random variation in the form of genetic variants which predispose some individuals to smoke more or smoke less. This is in the form of an instrumental variable analysis known as Mendelian randomization and we can compare the rates of depressive symptoms across the groups who inherited genetic variants that made them smoke more on average compared with those who did not inherit those genetic variants. So for our fellowship at the EOS, we're interested in answering the question of how we can combine uh, insights about causality from different fields in order to improve triangulation and answer complex mental health questions. And given our background in genetics, we're especially interested in how we can combine genetic methods with methods from different fields. And since the EOS is such an interdisciplinary place, this is a perfect place for us to answer these kinds of questions. So one of the things that we're doing at our fellowship at EAS is that we're organizing an expert meeting. And so we've invited experts from all different kinds of fields, such as psychology, epidemiology, genetics and philosophy. Uh, and together with these experts, we're going to answer questions like uh, how we can combine different causal estimates, but also what kind of problems we can expect to encounter in this process of triangulation. Mm -hmm.